Rahman Rahim. I welcome you all the students of engineering, mechanical engineering, and especially the Khwaja Farid University of Engineering Information Technology in the 10th lecture of heat and mass transfer. Uh, in this uh, lecture, I will discuss the basics of the convective heat transfer. Uh, this is the chapter number 6, Introduction to Convection, from the book Fundamental of Heat and Mass Transfer by Frank P. Incopira and David P. David. I am using the 7th edition, but the, uh, the concepts are same, whether you take any, any editions, no problem. Uh, the objective of this chapter that we've discussed in the next uh, 3 to 4 lectures, to understand the physical mechanism of convection and its classification, to visualize the development of velocity and thermal boundary layers during flow over surfaces. That is a little bit complex phenomena. I will discuss it in detail. Gain a, gain a working knowledge of dimensionless, dimensionless numbers like Reynolds number, Prandtl number, Nusselt number, Schwitt number, Grashof number, Sherwood number, and their number of... Uh, 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 dimensionless number that we discuss and their significance. Distinguish between laminar and turbulent flow and the gain and understanding of the mechanism of momentum and heat transfer in the turbulent flow. Next, we derive the differential equations that govern convection on the basis of mass, momentum and energy balances and solve these equations for some simple cases such as laminar flow or a flat plane non-dimensionalize the convection coefficients and obtain the functional form of friction and heat transfer coefficient. Non-dimensionalize, this is like u star is equal to uh, u over v, v, uh, v star is equal to, of course, v over capital V, and these type of things we have to dimensionalize, uh, non-dimensionalize uh, the convective convection equations. Use analogy between momentum and heat transfer and determine the heat transfer coefficient from the knowledge of friction coefficient. Convection, what is the, con uh, the convection physical mechanism actually? Conduction and convection both require the presence of material medium, but, con but convection requires fluid motion. If you see, we have this surface and the heat is being transferred from this surface. One thing is the this air, right, is flowing over this. When air is flowing over this, the heat transfer is is uh, between the solid and the air. It is due to convection. So convection involves the fluid motion as well as heat conduction. So here in this case, the conduction as well as convection will take place. But the heat transfer due to the motion of the molecules from one point to another point, that is basically a convection. And heat transfer within the solid, basically, that is the heat, that is conduction that we discussed, that we have discussed earlier. So the heat transfer to a, to a solid is always a conduction. To the solid is always conduction, but to the fluid it is convection and maybe sometimes radiation. So heat transfer to a fluid a, is by convection is the in the presence of bulk fluid motion and by, condu by conduction in the presence of heat. Therefore, conduction in a fluid can be viewed as the limiting case of convection corresponding to the case of quiescent fluid. Means on the, uh, within the solid or at the surface, that is basically that is the conduction. But when the air flow or any fluid flow over the surface, the heat transfer between the solid and the, and the fluid is because of the convection. So the convection is the heat transfer in the fluid because of the motion of the molecules. Convection, the physical phenomena of the convection is the fluid motion enhances the heat transfer since it brings warmer and cooler chunks of fluid into in, in contact, initiating higher rates of, of conduction at a greater number of sides in the fluid. Basically, it forces these, the, the cold fluid and the hot fluid to mix together and to transfer the heat. So the rate of heat transfer through a fluid is much higher by convection than it is than it is by conduction. The rate of heat transfer is higher. 
So, in fact, the higher the fluid velocity, the higher the rate of heat transfer. So, heat transfer, for example, heat transfer to a fluid sandwiched between two parallel plates. If this is the hot plate and this is the cold plate and the fluid is moving through this, of course, heat transfer from the, the hot plate to the, to the uh, cold plate. And that is basically the heat transfer takes place. And higher the velocity of the fluid, of course, more will the heat transfer. Convection heat transfer strongly depends on the fluid properties as well. Uh, dynamic viscosity, thermal conductivity, density, and specific heat, as well as the fluid properties. So, fl fluid velocity. So, it depends upon the, the different parameters like thermal conductivity, density, specific heat, visco dynamic viscosity, kinematic viscosity, or fluid velocity. So, it also depends on the geometry, of course, and the roughness of the, of the solid surface, in addition to the type of the fluid also, because type of the fluid, uh, fluid flow means the, it is streamlined flow, it's a laminar flow, turbulent flow, transient flow, it also depends on this. So, the, the heat, convective heat transfer is a complex phenomenon. Of course, it depends on not only the fluid properties, it also depends upon the geometry and the roughness of the, uh, of the solid surface on which the flow is taking place. In addition, of course, it also takes care uh, what is a what is the type of fluid flow? It's a streamlined flow, means laminar flow or turbulent flow. So, according to Newton's law of cooling that we have discussed earlier, Q dot of convective is H, is the convective heat transfer coefficient at Es minus T infinity, that is watt per meter square. And similarly, if you take total heat transfers, Q dot, capital dot convection, we, when we use capital Q, it means the overall heat transfer, you multiply the surface area is Ts minus T infinity, where H is the convective heat transfer coefficient watt per meter square Kelvin, A is the surface area meter square, T is the surface temperature of that solid body, and T infinity is the environmental temperature. So, convection heat transfer coefficient is the basic rate of heat transfer between a solid surface and a fluid per unit surface area per, per unit temperature difference. So, it is a heat transfer between the solid and the fluid per unit surface area, per unit area, per unit temperature difference. Okay, as we, we further move in the convection heat transfer, it is better to revise certain important things that we have discussed already in fluid mechanics or you have discussed in your previous classes of fluid mechanics, but here I as I'm using these terms and Therefore, uh, it is better to revise it quickly. Classification of fluid flow, viscous versus inviscid rigid, uh, uh, regions of flow. Viscous flow, flow in which the friction effects are significant, right? If you see in this area, the small area, here the viscous effect, viscous regions is significant and, and beyond this, of course, is the inviscid flow where the viscous effects are not very significant or negligible. The flow of an originally uniform fluid stream over a flat plate and the region of the viscous next to the plate on both sides, the inviscid flow away from the plate. You see the plate, this is the flow over the plate on the upper side, the lower side. In this area, of course, with very close, here the viscous effects are important, friction coefficient taken here and here with the, with the far away from the plate and here the viscous effects are not, uh, you can say frictional effects are not very significant because here the contact between the fluid and the solid, the, here the skin friction and these things are important to take care. External flow, the flow of an unbounded fluid over a surface such as a plate, a wire, a pipe, a cylinder, right? So, for example, there is a plate, a flow is uh, taking place of this, or if you have pipe, the flow is over this, or if you have a ball, the flow is over this. So, it is not passing through this, it is passing over the surface, and it is unbounded flow. In general flow, the flow in pipe or duct, if the fluid is completely bounded by solid surfaces. We First, we discuss the external flows, and then we discuss the, the internal flows, heat, heat transfer in the internal flows, like the, fl fl the fluid passing through a pipe, through a duct and all this, like air uh, air passing in the conduct in the air conditioning systems. So, water flow in a pipe a, is internal flow and air flow over a ball is basically external flow. The flow of liquid in a duct is called open channel flow. If the duct is only partially filled 
with a liquid and there is a free surface. We say open channel flow is a flow, of course, in which the fluid, the, the, uh, the fluid is not occupying the whole space, right? Then it is called open, open channel. But if the fluid is occupying the whole space, then it is, uh, it is a fluid, uh, pipe flow or internal flow. The open channel flow is only when there is a, there is a free space which is not in which, which is not being occupied by the uh, fluid. Compressible versus incompressible <coughs> flow. Incompressible flow, the density of the fluid flowing remains nearly constant throughout. For example, liquid flow, this is mostly the incompressible flow. Liquids are, uh, are uh, very difficult to compress at a very high pressure. Compressible flow of the density of the fluid changes during the flow at a high speed, uh, for example, high speed gas flows. These are basically compressible flows. When analyzing rockets, spacecraft, and other systems that involve high speed gas flows, the flow speed is often expressed as a Mach number. Mach number is the speed of the flow over the speed of the sun. <clears throat> if it is equal to 1, of course, the body is moving with the sonic velocity. If it is less than 1, it's a subsonic. And if Mach number is greater than 1, it's supersonic. If Mach number is very much larger than 1 to, uh, g g very much larger than 4, 3, or 4, and five that is called hypersonic flow. So for a compressible flow, the of course the treatment is entirely different, uh, and then the gas dynamics is being involved in that particular case. Laminar versus turbulent flow. Laminar flow, the highly ordered flow in which these layers are basically parallel to each other. The flow of high viscosity fluids such as oil at low velocities is typically the laminar flow. Now, the turbulent flow, the highly disordered flow motion, I see this is highly, highly disordered flow. There is a mixing which will take place, high velocities and fluctuations are there. The flow of low viscosity fluids such as air, high velocities is typically turbulent flow. The low velocity, uh, viscosity flows, uh, fluids moving at a very high velocity, of course, like the air is blowing at high speed that is, that is basically a turbulent flow and similarly if, if you see the the spikes uh, or the rise and fall in in the sea is basically a turbulent flow transitional flow a flow that alternates between laminar and turbulent if you see this is the transition flow it is initially laminar then it becomes slightly turbulent then it becomes laminar that is a transitional flow the region between the laminar and the turbulent is basically a trans, uh, the transitional flow. Then is very now the other important thing is it is a natural also force flow. Force flow of fluid is forced to flow over a surface on a pipe by external means uh, such as pump or a fan or a compressor. Natural flow is a fluid flow is due to natural means by means of the buoyancy effects which which manifests itself as a rise of warmer thus as uh, and thus lighter fluid and the wall and the fall of cooler and that's cooler fluid like cooler fluid becomes denser so it becomes at the low means it's a natural flow it, it is a flow taken place because of natural phenomena when the fluid becomes uh, hot it becomes uh, light and it's move up above and when it becomes cold, it becomes uh, heavier, its density is heavier, it's moving downward. This is a natural flow. But if if force the fluid to move to pass over a certain fluid, uh, over a certain surface within the tubes or whatever, then it of course there is a pump or a fan or a uh, compressor is behind the fluid. Uh, steady versus unsteady flow. The term steady implies no change of a, uh, no change at a point with time, no change with time, of course. Whenever I say steady, steady means no change with time. The positive of steady is called as steady flow, this, the flow uh, which, which is not steady, which, which is changing with time, that is called steady flow. The term uniform implies no change with location over a specified region. In a certain region, the, no change the, at that particular location, that is basically uniform flow. The term periodic refers to the kind of unsteady flow in which the flow oscillates about a steady mean, right? Periodic motion, that a motion which oscillates at a particular point by a to and fro motion, cyclic motion. 
Many devices such as turbines, compressors, boilers, condensers and heat exchangers operate for a long period of time under the same condition and they are classified as steady flow devices. Right? So we, we take with a very common devices to use compressors, turbines, boilers and they are being used for a steady flow. Oscillating wake of a blunt based aerofluid at Mach number 6.6. .6. If you see, this is the blade and this is the wake which is produced at the back of this at a Mach number 0.6. Means the, uh, 60, uh, the, the body is moving with the 60% of the velocity of sound. This is instantaneous image. But now if you see, it's a long exposure. This is at a particular instant. When a long exposure and we take the average time and I see this flow becomes almost uh, uh, constant and there is a wake produced or you can say there is a vacuum produced at the back of this for a long exposure but the flow becomes uh, becomes steady or uniform after a certain long period of time. Two, one, two and three dimensional flows. This is also very important. We are taking one dimensional flow, or two dimensional flow, three dimensional flow. A flow fluid is best characterized by its velocity distribution. You can characterize the flow, how the velocity is being distributed as we move along the flow or as we move in the vertical direction, in the y direction. The flow is said to be one, two or three dimensional if the flow velocity varies in one, two or three dimension respectively. If the velocity is only varying in the one direction, of course, one dimensional flow. If it is varying in x and y direction, which is mostly the take the case, we are taking the two dimensional flow. But if it is varying with, in, in all the three, X is X, Y, Z, of course, then the three dimensional flow. However, the variation of velocity in a certain direction can be small relative to the variation in the other direction and can be ignored. Let's see the development of the velocity profile in a circular pipe with velocity V is a function of R and Z and thus the flow in two dimension in the entrance region and becomes one dimensional downstream when the velocity profile fully developed. If you see initially, of course, the R direction this is the R direction and this is the Z direction, right? Initially, the flow is, of course, parallel. When coming in, it's changing in the R direction and whereas in the Z direction. But as long as we are moving, when the flow becomes completely developed, now it's only the function of Z. Now, fully developed and remains unchanged in the, in the flow direction R. So when it, when it now the velocity profile is not changing in the R, it becomes a completely developed flow. For that case, it's only the function of the Z, the, the direction in which the fluid is, is moving. No slip condition is very important and mostly students sometimes confuse. A fluid is in, in direct contact with the solid and is stick to the surface to the viscous effect. And there is no slip because the layer, the layer, the layer which is directly in contact with the surface, and because of viscosity effect, this layer is is stick to the surface, and then we say it's a slow, no slip condition. Means there is no slip of the flow uh, of the fluid with the solid. What is a viscosity? Of course, viscosity means how easily a fluid can flow, like uh, the honey and water. Of course, honey has a high viscosity. It is difficult to difficult to flow. Water has a low viscosity. It can easily flow, and, and air is have a very low velocity and is very easily to flow. So basically, with the viscosity, we can uh, determine if this flow is this fluid is easy to flow or difficult to flow. Boundary layer that is important thing. The flow region, the flow region adjacent to the wall in which the viscous effects. And thus the velocity gradients are significant. When the flow is passing through a surface, of course the, 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 the layer, one layer is just attached with the surface, no slip condition, and the other fluids are moving relative to this, of course, and at, at, up to a certain point in the y direction, the viscosity effects are important. And viscosity effect will affect the velocity, velocity along the y direction. And after that region, the velocity, when the velocity, be, velocity becomes 
point nine nine of the free stream velocity from where the, velocity, the fluid is coming in up to that point we say it is a hydrodynamic body layer or the velocity body layer the fluid property pro property is responsible for the no slip condition and the development of boundary layer is basically the viscosity so the, the boundary layer is formed because of the viscosity and of course no slip condition is because of the viscosity so why we discuss the boundary layer the hydrodynamic boundary layer is because of the viscosity and that is basically the, the layer which is in contact is a no slip condition and then as long as we are moving in the y direction the one layer is moving on the other on the ease and we the velocity is increasing at, at a certain point if you see the velocity becomes 0.99 of the free stream velocity and that is the maximum region in which the uh, viscosity effect are are to be discussed or dominant and they change the velocity significantly and after that region of course we will not take care of the boundary so why we call it is a boundary layer because the two boundaries of the fluids are meeting together therefore it's called boundary layer the solid boundary and the fluid and the fluid boundary if you see this is a uniform velocity coming v from the free stream velocity and now it is moving here on the surface of course this this surface layer have a zero velocity and it is increasing increasing as we are moving in the upward direction viscosity effects are becoming uh, lesser and lesser so fluid flowing over a stationary surface comes to complete stop at the surface because of the no slip zone at this point of course is no slip condition and as long as you are moving in the opposite uh, uh, above uh, y direction the velocity is increasing and at that point when this velocity becomes 0.99 of the free free stream velocity that is the thickness of the hydrodynamic boundary layer what's the mode of heat transfer between no slip condition and solid surface how the heat transfer will takes place in the no slip condition and between the solid surface an implication of the no slip condition is that the heat transfer from the solid surface to the fluid layer adjacent to the surface is by pure conduction conduction since the fluid layer is motionless right so the layer which is in contact with the solid there is only heat transfer is because of conduction so in that case q conduct convective is equal to q conduct conductive that is minus k of fluid that's curly t by curly y that at y is equal to 0 the watt per meter square when mean at y is equal to 0 at the surface of the solid the heat transfer is taking place because of the conduction okay to now next question is to find the uh, determine the convective heat transfer uh, coefficient when the temperature distribution when the fluid is known so we we compare with the uh, with the uh, convective heat transfer heat transfer so it convective heat transfer is equal to h t s minus t t t is equal to minus k of fluid Curly by curly y is equal, y at uh, y is equal to zero. So what we get we get h is equal to minus k of the fluid. Curly t by curly curly t by curly y at y is equal to zero. T s minus infinity we get the convective heat transfer coefficient in just uh, at the surface of the fluid at, at the surface of the solid and the fluid. There is a no slip condition. Watt per meter square degree Celsius. The convection heat transfer coefficient in general varies. along the flow in the x direction the average or mean convection heat transfer coefficient for the surface is in such cases is determined by properly properly averaging the local conv convection heat transfer coefficient over the entire surface area as or the length al so the heat transfer coefficient convective heat transfer coefficient at a particular instance the local but if we take the overall heat transfer coefficient we take the average over the surface or if in one dimensional flow then the average along the length so the average or mean convective heat transfer coefficient for the surface is such cases is determined by properly averaging the local convective heat transfer coefficient over the entire surface like as or a so h is equal to 1 by as integral of h local time das over the surface or if you're taking along the length only only one direction so h is equal to h bar is equal to 1 by l 0 to l h x v x for the for the special case the flow over the flat plate is of course we have shown you that is 1 by l flat or a flat plate so simple 1 by l 0 to l h v x this h x is the local heat transfer coefficient at particular instant and h bar is the overall or average heat transfer coefficient 
Next student, I'm talking of the, the velocity boundary layer, and after this, I talk about the thermal boundary layer, and then we talk of the combined boundary layers. So the velocity boundary layer, I have already uh, discussed a little bit with, with the velocity boundary layer. The velocity boundary layer, the region of the flow above the plate, bounded by, by of course, a certain delta, in which the effect of the viscous shearing force is caused by the fluid property. Of course, the same, the same definition. Right, the why we call it boundary because the fluid, the two fluid, uh, two it, it is caused at the boundary of the two fluid. Number two, the region in which the viscous effects are are to be to be dominant, and that is called the velocity boundary layer. And what is the thickness of the boundary layer? Of course, a region at which you see uh, at which the uh, velocity of the fluid becomes 0.99 of the free stream velocity. That becomes the, uh, th the thickness of the boundary layer. So boundary layer thickness can be determined where the velocity becomes 0.99 of the free stream velocity. The hypothetical line of U 0.99V divides the flow over a plate into two regions. Is a boundary layer region up to, for example, up to here, for example, up to here, down this is a boundary layer region and a rotational flow region the frictional X effects are negligible and the velocity remains essentially constant. And above this, of course, is the air rotational flow where the viscous, viscous effects are not significant. If you see here, uh, this is the laminar boundary layer, this is a transition period, and now this becomes the turbulent boundary layer. So the thickness is changing with the flow type as well. In laminar, of course, the thickness is small. In the turbulent, the thickness is large, meaning it takes more thickness right so to the third that the velocity becomes about 99 percent of the free stream velocity so the boundary layer is called boundary because it is at the boundary of the two fluids right the region in which the velocity effects are significant right and th this is called this is called hydrodynamic boundary layer or velocity boundary layer which is taken 0.99 of the v this is the thickness of the boundary layer and of course the thickness of boundary layer in the region in which the, thick, the, the boundary layer effects are significant is a boundary layer region and where the, the uh, friction effects means the viscous effects are almost negligible. This is called air rotational flow stream. So flow is divided into two regions in the vertical direction. And of course, the thickness of the laminar boundary layer is smaller as compared to thickness of the turbulent boundary layer. This viscosity basically caused shear forces that we have discussed already in uh, our previous classes, uh, especially in fluid mechanics. Shear stress is a frictional force, of course, per unit area. So when the, when the flow is passing over the surface, it is causing a shear stress. And we know that the shear stress at the wall is mu is curly u by curly y, and y is equal to zero. Okay, and of course, beyond the boundary layer, where the du by dy effects are almost negligible, the shear stress, the shear stress at the wall is almost zero. As a mu is a dynamic viscosity and du curly u by curly y is the rate of change of velocity in the y direction. The unit of uh, uh, the dynamic viscosity is kilogram meter per sec kilogram meter per second or newton second per meter square or pascal second. It is also called poise. One poise is equal to 0.1 pascal second. If uh, we see uh, the effect of viscosity, right? This is the, the, the this is the temperature and this is the uh, viscosity. The viscosity of the liquid is decreasing with temperature, and the viscosity of the gases is increasing with uh, with, with with temperature and it becomes constant. The fluid that obey the linear relationship above are above are called Newtonian fluids. The fluid that obey the linear relationship above are called uh, Newtonian fluids. Most common fluids such as water, air, gasoline, and oil are Newtonian fluids. Blood and liquid, blood and liquid plastics are example of non-Newtonian fluids. They do not follow the uh, Newton's Newton uh, Newton fluids property. So we will discuss only Newtonian fluids. The fluids that obey the linear relationship above are called linear uh, are called uh, Newtonian fluids. Kinematic viscosity is basically uh, nu, which is mu over rho, which most we will use, is meter square per second or also called stroke. 
वन स्ट्रोक इज इक्वल टू वन सेंटीमीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वायर और पॉइंट ट्रिपल जीरो वन मीटर स्क्वायर पर सेकेंड इन दिस टेबल आई हैव शोन यू द डिफरेंट डायनेमिक विस्कॉस्टीज न्यू ऑफ द डिफरेंट फ्लूड्स एंड एट डिफरेंट टेम्परेचर्स एंड यू कैन सी दैट ग्लासीन एज अ हायर एंड कमिंग डाउन डाउन इन द टेबल यू गेट दिस्कॉस्टी इज डिक्रीजिंग इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द it depends upon the type of the fluid and the temperature so the viscosity of the fluid is a measure of its resistance to deformation and it is a strong function of temperature it depends upon temperature wall shear wall shear stress tau uh, tau w cf rho v square by 2 newton per meter square that we discussed earlier where cf is the the friction coefficient or skin friction coefficient friction uh, friction force over the entire surface will be of course the shear stress multiplied by area so it is cfas rho v square by 2 the friction coefficient is an important parameter in heat transfer studies since it is directly related to the heat transfer coefficient so skin friction is very important and the power requirement of the pump or a fan right so if you need to find the power required for the fan you need friction coefficient and when we if you need to find the heat transfer coefficient you have to have the uh, the uh, cf the friction coefficient so we have discussed the region in which the velocity effects are to be changing over the y direction that is called velocity boundary layer it is called boundary because it is being discussed at the boundary of the two fluids below the uh, in the region in which the velocity effects are significant that is called uh, that region is called velocity uh, boundary layer or boundary layer region and the region in which the these effects are negligible is called air rotational flow as we are discussing the heat transfer to the students so today we also discuss now the thermal boundary layer thermal boundary layer of course as the name shows it develops when the fluid at a specified temperature flow over a surface that, that is at different temperature for example the fluid is moving at a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade and the fluid of a surface has a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade and of course when the fluid moving over a certain surface the heat transfer will take place and as long as you are moving in the vertical direction the temperature is changing and at a certain point the temperature of the fluid variation curly t by curly y that becomes almost constant up to that region that 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 layer is the thermal boundary layer for example you know we have a this t infinity environmental temperature but when and that is we, we are moving along uh, this is at uh, infinite temperature means environmental temperature this plate is at certain uh, surface temperature right so once uh, you are uh, once fluid is moving of course heat transfer will takes place and <coughs> the rate of change of temperature in the y direction is changing at a certain point when this rate of change of temperature becomes 0.99 of the uh, free stream temperature then of course we say uh, then we say the t minus t s is equal to means t minus t s the temperature of at any instant with the surface temperature is equal to 0.99 of, of t infinity minus t s means the environmental temperature and surface temperature is almost 0.99 of the temperature at any different temperature difference at any instant with the surface then we say it's a thermal boundary layer a thermal boundary layer on a flat plate the fluid is hotter than the plate surface we say the fluid is at higher temperature and the plate is at the lower temperature thermal boundary layer the fluid region over the surface in which the temperature variation in the direction direction normal to the surface normal to the surface mean in this is the surface and this is the normal to the surface is significant so the region in which the temperature variation in normal normal to the surface are significant we say is the thermal boundary layer the thickness of the boundary layer uh, delta t at any location along the surface is defined as the distance from the surface at which the temperature difference is t minus ts equals to 0.99 of t infinity minus ts temperature at any instant minus the surface, the surface temperature this will equal to the maximum difference about 0.99 uh, maximum difference is t infinity minus ts 0.99 of this because i am taking the t infinity is larger than the ts therefore i am taking t infinity minus ts if the plate temperature is higher then it comes ts minus t infinity 
the thickness of thermal boundary layer increases in the flow direction. If you see, it is increasing since the effects of the heat transfer are felt at a greater distance from the surface further down the stream. And this uh, variation of, temp of temperature is increasing. And we will take up to that point when the difference of the temperature in T minus Ts becomes equal to the maximum temperature difference T infinity minus Ts, 0.99 of this. And that is called my delta T, which is, which is the thickness of the thermal boundary layer. The shape of the temperature profile in the thermal boundary layer dictates the convection heat transfer between a solid surface and the fluid over it. Okay. So, what type of the uh, this shape, this is uh, uh, parabolic or it's hyperbolic, and this will de de determine the uh, amount of the uh, convective heat transfer coefficient. So, the thermal boundary layer is a boundary layer in which or region in which a, in which the temperature gradient normal to the sur surface are significant. And we will take the, the thickness of the boundary layer uh, when the temperature difference at any instant, T minus Ts, becomes equal to the 0.99 of the maximum temperature difference, T infinity minus Ts or Ts minus T infinity. In our case, we are taking the fluid is at higher temperature and the plate is at low temperature. Therefore, I am taking T infinity minus Ts. So, dear students, the hydrodynamic boundary layer is because of the variation of the viscosity in that region or change in velocity. And similarly, the, the thermal boundary layer is the change in temperature in the, in the, in the y direction where the, these effects are significant. We talk of the thermal boundary layer. So, on that, in, in, in the case of the hydrodynamic boundary layer, we are talking of the velocity profile. And in the case of thermal boundary layer, we are talking of the temperature profile. I think this is clear. So, let's see that at any instant from x, from the leading edge, x means from the leading edge from this point, right? The local heat transfer may be obtained by applying Fourier's law to the fluid because at the skin, of course, this is the conduction which takes place at y is equal to 0 that I have already discussed. So, Q double dash s, which per unit area, minus kf curly t by curly y at y is equal to 0. This expression is approximately appropriate because at the surface there is no fluid motion. Energy transfer occur only by conduction. And this heat transfer is equal to the convection which is Q double dash S is equal to H T S minus T infinity which I have already shown you. By combining this you can find the convective heat transfer coefficient is minus Kf. Kf means the thermal conductivity of the fluid is curly T by curly Y at Y is equal to 0 over T S minus T infinity. So both heat flux and heat transfer coefficient. Heat flux is Q double dash, right? Heat flux watt per meter square and heat transfer coefficient decrease in the flow direction. Why? Because the temperature gradient decreases in the y direction as the temperature of the fluid layer rises. So have, as long as we are moving along the, the plate, along the surface, of course, the curly, the rate of change of temperature decreasing, therefore heat flux and of course the the heat transfer coefficients are decreasing. Laminar and turbulent velocity boundary layers. So, boundary layer developed on the flat plates as shown below. I have shown in many cases laminar and turbulent flow conditions both occur with the laminar section preceding the turbulent section. So, for either condition, the fluid uh, motion is characterized by velocity components in the x and y direction. So, where is the laminar flow or where is the turbulent flow? We are basically de determining the velocity components in the x and y direction. Fluid motion away from the surface is necessitated by the showing of the fluid near the wall as the boundary layer region grows in the x direction. Right? If you see, this is the um, environmental velocity. This is x direction. This is the y direction. This is velocity in x direction, velocity in y direction. And this is the velocity of the stream. As long as we are moving from the x up to that certain point where this becomes laminar flow, this is a laminar boundary, boundary layer, we say xc. And this is my transition region. And then we talk of this, uh, the turbulent uh, region where the complete uh, mixing and churning effect will take place. And what will happen and that the boundary layer will form and up till here, this is u infinity. If you see the lower layer where the velocity is changing very quickly, there's a buffer layer or viscous sublayer. And after above this, that is the turbulent 
region of the uh, viscous boundary layer. In the laminar boundary, boundary layer, the fluid flow is uh, highly ordered and it is possible to identify streamline, streamline along with the particles move move boundary layer thickness grows and and that velocity gradient is y is equal to zero decrease in the streamline right this is very smooth and is gradually increasing and at a certain point of course uh, the rate of change of the of the velocity almost negligible we also see that the local surface shear stresses also decreases with the increasing s as long as x increasing of course the du by dy is decreasing the shear stress is also increasing flow in the fully turbulent boundary layer is in general highly irregular and is characterized by random three dimensional motion of the relatively large pa uh, particle of fluids but i have already told that turbulent flow is basically uh, is the irregular flow is a churning and mixing and three dimensional flow is a highly irregular flow so mixing within the boundary layer carries high speed fluid towards the solid surface and transfers slower moving particles further into the free stream so this mixing will takes place the low moving particles back into the flow and that for th therefore the heat transfer is uh, higher in the turbulent as compared to into the laminar boundary layer flow condition of flat plate for a flat plate the renold number varies between 10 to 5 to 3 x 6 depends upon the surface roughness you know that renold number is a uh, rho u x upon mu the critical value of the renault number is uh, 5 x 5 if the renault number is equal to u by kali y this is the laminar boundary layer right and this is the uh, this region is the up till here this is the here with the viscous effects are very significant and that is a turbulent boundary layer which i show you here this is a buffer layer right so this is the bu buffer layer and this is the uh, turbulent here. Yeah. So here, curly u by curly y is equal to zero, which is less than curly u by curly y at y is equal to zero. So here, the velocity effects are less. At, the rate of change of velocity is less as compared to the turbulent. So therefore, turbulent boundary layer is uh, is larger as compared to the uh, laminar boundary layer. And the critical point where they, it becomes. Uh, Fully turbulent, it is 5 x 5 and the null number is 5 x 5. Variation of uh, velocity boundary layer thickness and convective heat transfer coefficient over the isothermal plate. Isothermal plate, the plate, it means the plate has a constant temperature. How the thickness and the convective heat transfer coefficient are changing. If you see, this is the length and this is the thickness of the boundary layer. And if you see up till here, at this point, this Renault number is a critical and up to here, the flow is laminar. And of course, the shear stress is decreasing. But when the flow becomes turbulent, then, then the shear force is significantly increases in the transition region. And then it is decreasing. It is increasing in the transition region because in this case, the diffusion is takes place and the shear force increases. And then if you see the in, in, in the shear force is decreasing because of the mixing, but the th thickness of the boundary layer is still increasing. Let's see the trend in the, uh, uh, of course, the in the uh, thickness of boundary layer and the convective heat transfer coefficient. If you see in the laminar region, first the the laminar boundary layer, of course, increasing. Then this dotted one is a transition region, is slightly also increasing because of the diffusion. And then it increases as a slower rate in the turbulent region. So that is a turbulent boundary layer thickness. And this region is a transition and this one is a laminar. This is increasing, uh, increasing, right? Then du by dy, right? The boundary layer thickness is increasing. And at this region now, it, at a higher value of this, where it becomes, the velocity becomes 0.99 of the field stream velocity. And ho here, of again, the velocity churning effect will take place, mixing, and then it also increases. In the case of this uh, convective heat transfer coefficient, it is decreasing because at du by dy is decreasing. And in the case, and then when in, in the transitional region, it almost increases linearly, sharply increases, because in this case, in transition case, 
the mixing, uh, the, the, the diffusion rate takes place, which increases the rate of heat transfer, uh, therefore convective heat transfer coefficient increases. And in the last region, you see in, in the turbulent, it is with, uh, the, the, uh, the convective heat transfer is decreasing with a slow rate, but it is decreasing because here the diffusion as well as mixing will take place. With the mixing, the cold particle also mix with the hot particles and that will decrease the convective heat transfer coefficient. Uh, dear students, I stop here. I have in this lecture I have discussed what is uh, the uh, convection, what is uh, the thermal boundary layer, what is the convective boundary layer, what is the effect on the convective boundary layer, what is the effect of the variations of the, in different regions, laminar, turbulent, and transition on the thick on the thickness of the boundary layer on the convective heat transfer coefficient. And I also uh, revised what is the laminar flow, what is the turbulent flow, what is the inviscid flow, what is the Newtonian fluid. These basic things are being discussed. I have now discussed only laminar boundary layer and the turbulent boundary layer, uh, sorry, laminar boundary layer, or uh, I can say hydrodynamic boundary layer and the thermal boundary layer separately. But of course, when the flow is moving, and of course, the, the heat is also being transferred when the, the fluid and the surface are at different temperatures, both boundary layers will, uh, will occur simultaneously. So next lecture is regarding this how this simultaneously uh, th these uh, boundary layers are being developed and then we will discuss the non-dimensionalization of the uh, equations, uh, continuity equation, momentum equation, energy equations and then we develop the different dimensionless numbers and we solve some examples and problems. So please uh, in contact like this uh, video if you like it and uh, keep in touch because that's ne next lecture will the real application of these. Thank you.